welcome to you all to this first lecture on sound and uh, structural vibration. So, the name of the course is sound. and structural vibration. As was said in the introduction, we will be interested in how sound influences structure and how structural vibrations cause sound. So, to begin with we need to know the wave equation, wave equation that governs the behavior of sound. Okay. And it is given by for a one dimensional case del 2 p del x square is equal to 1 over c square del 2 p by del p square. Okay. You are expected to know this equation. So, the general solution, the general solution to this equation is P x comma t is equal to f of c t minus x plus g of c t plus x. Okay. These are two functions one has the argument c t minus x, the other has the argument c t plus x. So, we will just see how f c t minus x happens to be the solution to the wave equation. So, let me use the next page. So, we have let me rewrite the equation we have del 2 p del x square is equal to 1 over c square del 2 p del t square and we are looking at this function f of c t minus x. Okay. So, I am going to substitute f of c t minus x in place of p. So, we will need del del x of f of c t minus x which happens to be del f c t minus x by del c t minus x and del del x of c t minus x. We have used the chain rule. Okay. So, this entity the derivative of f with respect to its own argument I will write it as f dash. Okay. And here 
the derivative of c t minus x with respect to x gives me minus 1. So, I get here minus 1 times f dash. Okay. Then I need to take the del del x of f dash of c t minus x. Okay. So, that gives me again del f dash of c t minus x again with respect to its own argument and del by del x of c t minus x. It is a partial derivative not d d x. Okay. So, now what we get here again is a minus 1 from the first effort then the derivative of f dash with respect to its argument which is f double dash and then one more minus 1 from here minus 1. So, this is minus 1 square. So, this gives me f double dash. Okay. So, the left side gave me f double dash which is the okay, left hand side spatial derivative. Now, I have to do the temporal derivative, time derivatives. Okay. The time derivative gives me del del t f of c t minus minus x is equal to again uh, del by del c t minus x f of c t minus x then del del t c t minus x. So, this gives me c times f dash. Then I have to take the second derivative. So, del del t of c f dash c t minus x is equal to c is a constant del f dash c t minus x by del of c t minus x then del by del t of c t minus x. So, this gives me c square f double dash. One more c comes from here, there is already a c here. So, I get c square and f double dash. So, this is right hand side. Okay. Now, the right hand side also has 1 over c square. Okay. So, this has to be divided by c square. So, I have if I divide this by c square, I get f double dash which is the same as left hand side. Okay. So, what does that prove? It proves that indeed f of c t minus x is the solution. solution to the wave equation. Okay. Next, the next idea is this. Harmonically excited systems. So, in this course we are going to deal with harmonically excited systems. Okay. 
And what do we mean? What we mean is the systems will be driven what we mean is forced okay driven or forced at a single frequency the single frequency omega okay omega is in the units of radians per second that is what we mean by harmonically excited. So, for example, for example, you must have seen the spring mass system, okay. The equation of motion is mx double dot plus kx, and let us say it is driven harmonically, so that would be f cosine omega t okay so it's driven at omega or the forcing could be f sin omega t okay here also it's driven at the same omega okay omega is in radians per second however i would also like to introduce the idea of a complex notation complex notation okay which means that instead of cosine omega t or sine omega t i will use e to the power j omega t okay there is a lot of convenience in here e to the power j omega t as you know is cos omega t plus j sin omega t okay. So, which means suppose I, I force it with the complex notation m x double dot plus k x is equal to f e to the power of j omega t okay and i solve it so i find my solution x of t then if i take the real part of this then i get the solution to the forcing f cos omega t and if i take the imaginary part of this then I get the solution to f sin omega t force. So, I get uh, I hit uh, with one stone I had hit two birds okay that is one advantage. The other advantage of course, is that derivatives are very easy to take if I take a derivative of this I get back e to the power j omega t with 1 j omega in front okay. So, the derivative becomes very simple. So, that is why we use the complex notation okay. It should be remembered always that we are finally interested in a real quantity. We are finally interested in a real quantity not a complex quantity in a real quantity. displacement or velocity or acceleration is a real quantity okay. So, e to the power j omega t notation is a convenience. So, finally, the answer is either the real part of this uh, obtained solution or the imaginary part of the obtained solution okay. However, we will use this notation which is very convenient okay. So, now let us see. The next idea, I am just building ideas that I need. Okay. So, the next idea 
is one of a phaser okay phaser what is that which is a rotating vector rotating vector okay now let us take an axis to explain this and I have a phaser, okay. it is given by e to the power j omega t with this as the real axis and this as the imaginary axis. Okay. So, now this angle is omega times t omega t that angle is omega t provided my t equal to 0 begins here okay t equal to 0 begins over here so this angle is omega t okay as the and this phasor rotates this this vector rotates this vector rotates So, at any instant of time it subtends cos omega t the projection on real axis and it has sin omega t the projection on the imaginary axis. Okay. So, now so if omega t happens to be 0 that is a t equal to 0 and we let us say t equal to 0 on the real axis let us say okay. then my e to the power j omega t is equal to 1. Okay. So, this value is 1 okay. and if omega t happens to be pi by 2 that means the phasor is here at the vertical position okay. then my e to the power j omega t is equal to j j okay. and along the same lines when omega t is equal to pi my e to the power j omega t is equal to minus 1. So, I am here minus 1. So, so, as this phasor rotates, as this phasor rotates, okay, you can see that the projection on the real axis, if I start here, moves as cosine omega t. So, suppose this was actually made of material solid rod okay, and I show a light over here, I put a torch light over here. So, there is a beam of light coming out okay. and then you track the shadow, you track the shadow. Let us say that you put a paper here and you track the shadow, then it begins with a value 1 okay. when this phasor is dead on the real axis and as it starts to move it drops its value from 1 and I track the project projection, okay. I track the projection okay. as I track it this oscillation on the real axis is that of cos omega t the shadow okay, or the tip. Similarly, if I show a light in the horizontal direction okay, and this arrow is made of solid material then the shadow starts at 0 and starts to grow okay starts to grow and reaches its peak when this arrow is aligned with imaginary axis so that moves as sin omega t okay so the phasor gives me the advantage of thinking about either sin omega t or cos omega t simultaneously at the same time. 
okay and I can choose towards the end what I want, what sort of forcing I want I can choose at the end, I do not have to choose it right in the beginning, okay. So, we will use this phasor notation, okay. Now, the next topic here is this, uh, I would like to introduce you to some basic terminologies, okay, basic terminologies. in wave propagation. Okay. So, in order to do that, let me change the page here because uh, okay, let me say what I am going to do then we will use this page. So, we will talk of uh, again phasors. Okay. Uh, we will talk of phase, okay. we will talk about wavelength, about wave number, this will be a new idea, wave number okay. and then speed, phase speed, phase speed. then frequency and time period and time period okay so let's change the page So, in order to do this, I will devise a little system, okay. Here is my system. It is made, let us see, it is made of a crank slider mechanism. crank slider mechanism okay and the crank is a phasor it is going to rotate it's going to rotate okay at frequency omega at omega reds per second it rotates okay and this this mass is attached to a spring okay, aligned along x axis and it goes off to infinity. Okay. We do not know where the other end is, it did go off, okay. it goes off to infinity. So, now as this phasor or rod rotates, as it rotates, as it completes uh, cycle after cycle, so this mass will oscillate back and forth, okay. And therefore, uh, pulses of compressions will move along the spring, pulses of rarefaction will move along the spring. Okay. This is a wave bearing system. Okay. This has a stiffness, this has stiffness, the spring has stiffness, the spring has inertia. Okay. So, together it is a wave bearing system. So, this repeated pulses or repeated movement of the crank will be transmitted along the spring. So, how will spring look like at some point? somewhere the mass may be here at some point and then there may be a very expanded region, then there will be a compressed region okay. 
then again there will be an expanded region, again a compressed region, again an expanded region and so forth. Okay. So, as this crank, so we will set the, the reference to be vertical okay, for convenience, the rest of the reference be vertical. So, I start over here, okay, that is my starting point okay, and starting phase also. So, this phase is a very confusing idea, it is used in many uh, meanings. So, we will consider this angle to be the phase. So, the reference phase is vertical. So, reference phase is pi by 2. Okay. The reference is unimportant in some sense because we will talk of differences, but the reference starting point is vertical. So, now how does this slider crank look like? It looks like this. Okay. The mass may be shifted because it is tied, that is how it looks like. So, this point, the starting point is for me the x equal to 0. Okay. And its phase is that of the phaser, it has the same phase as the phaser let us say. Okay. As I said this particular value is not important, however we will keep track of it, so, we will call it pi by 2. Okay. And so as this crank now goes around and comes back to the same vertical position, this spring has been pulled and brought back. Okay, it has gone through one cycle. So, one cycle of information gets transmitted along the uh, spring. Okay. When the phaser goes a second time, two cycles of information has been trans transmitted. Okay. That means what you will have rarefactions, compressions, rarefactions, compressions and as it goes more and more cycles, this information is moving. Okay. So, now there will be two regions on the spring which are doing the same type of motion okay. because in one cycle the same information was transferred okay. and it started a certain information was given to the mass when it goes around once that information has been transferred. So, some other region is seeing it. So, there are regions which are seeing similar movement they are lambda apart okay. and because this phaser is rotating at omega the time period t the time period for one rotation is twice pi by omega. Okay. So, one time period has gone by and in one time period this is the time in one time period lambda distance have been has been covered by the signal. The signal has covered the lambda distance, okay, and lambda is the wavelength. Wavelength. The distance covered by the wave in one time period is the wavelength, okay. It is also true that one wavelength apart, two particles of the spring will be seeing the same motion any two regions you take this region and lambda apart you take another particle both of them will be seeing the same type of motion okay now <coughs> what is the use of this first of all uh, let's say uh, my uh, in one cycle, so in one cycle the distance covered is lambda okay. and uh, the, the rod is doing omega radians per second omega radians per second okay, which you know is equal to twice pi times f, f in cycles per second. Okay. 
So, the rod is doing f rotations or f cycles per second. So, omega is twice pi f. So, we do in one cycle distance covered is lambda in f cycles the distance covered is f lambda okay. But f cycles are covered in one cycle one second okay f cycles are covered in one second. So, this is the distance covered in one second. So, that has to be the speed this is the speed of the wave. So, let me close the lecture here for today we will continue with this uh, the next class. Thank you.